permitted, I welcome you all to another exciting session of event management. Today, we're going to talk about risk management process. And under risk management process, we're going to talk about risk assessment and risk evaluation. In my previous sessions, we did talk about different types of risk. And we also spoke about the safety norms that is involved in handling those event risks. But today, we have to um, understand as to how do we identify those and how do we assess those risks. And uh, to help me with um, the risk assessment, making it more easier for you to understand, I shall share a small presentation with you. Allow me. Right. So as I mentioned, um, our session today is going to be mainly focusing on risk management process. And under that, there are four different uh, types or four different uh, um, categories, or with the first one is going to be risk assessment. So what is the actual risk management? So this risk management is a process um, to minimize the physical, financial, or emotional, any kind of damage that happens due to unwelcome circumstances. Few things like uh, in our uh, types of risk, we spoke about uh, external risk and uh, uh, risk related to uh, the event operations. So some external risks are not in our control. So anything that happens due to unwelcome circumstances is what uh, to avoid all this is what the risk management process is put in place. So it all depends upon how effective our risk management in terms of our approach or our proactiveness that we show or what is the standard operating procedures that we follow uh, in, uh, in the part of risk management is what would um, accustom to how we handle the risk effectively. So risk management process, in, uh, it's like an ongoing process, how we have uh, things with technology that upgrades or uh, uh, kind of you know, updates itself uh, every year. In similar way, risk management is an ongoing process. It begins with it begins with planning and completes only after the event is over and everything is winded up. So it is a total process. So in today's session, we're going to start talking about the first process, that is risk assessment. So risk assessment is the first step in the risk management process. It involves identification of possible risk that we may face in the event. In the previous unit, we might have also learned about different types and all those things we spoke about it. But in risk assessment, the first and foremost thing that we do is to identify risk. And depending upon the size, type, and location of the event involved in it, potential risks are identified. So the first one, as I mentioned, we have to identify all possible risks. So it's a very uh, like unique in itself. At the beginning of uh, any event process, the assessment meeting is uh, conducted. Like if we uh, finalize on a very big event, it could be a concert or it could be about a big exposition or a show that we're gonna do. So the first and foremost thing that uh, operations manager, the event manager, the entire team who's involved in that project will sit and identify all the areas of risk. So how do we identify all the areas of risk? On what basis do we identify all these various risks? Are the below. The first one is past experience. So if I've already done a concert previously, if I've done an exhibition previously, I know how my experience was and how it was on that location and that, uh, on that plane uh, or land where that we're doing, or it could be a convention hall, it could be anywhere. So the first and foremost thing is the past. How do we identify is based on the past experience. If I've done any previous event there, if I've done a similar event, if I've done a similar event to the client, or is it the same kind of crowd that we've done? Second is direct observation. Like um, we are already planning stage and we know what are things I like, I'm going to a site to do the recce. I'm seeing what is happening there. So that is direct observation. Okay, I can see that uh, there is a slope towards the end. Uh, the height of the ceiling is limited to 40 feet or there is a converging ceiling. That means the ceiling is reducing at a certain a angle. So, and there are only 10 exit doors. So all these things is direct observation. Meeting with the event stakeholders. Now, when we put up a big show, there are many stakeholders for so the sound guy, light guy, a generator, electrician, uh, structural people and everybody. So we call for a meeting with all the stakeholders, take their opinion, again, based on their past experience of that venue, based on their past experience of the kind of event that they've done, or based on their experience of um, handling similar events or anything that they would have observed in terms of direct observation. And discussing risk with staffs and volunteers, of course. Um, so all this identifying happens in that meeting only. So when we put across and everybody will put their points and that's how we come to that. Consultation with local authorities, including police and fire department. So now if I'm doing it in an open ground, if I'm doing it in a unique venue, like for example, sunburn happened at one on top of a hill in Pune way back in 2016 or 17, I believe. 
So uh, what happens is that when you're doing uh, in a place where the topography is very challenging, like you're doing a Hornbill festival or something where the topography is a challenge, the weather is a challenge, the local authorities are a challenge. So then what you have to do is you have to consult your local authorities saying that can we do all these things at this uh, location. And since they live in that place, they know what happens. They might know the soil conditions. They might know the weather conditions. They might know if it rains, what happens. So it is very, very important that we consult with the local authorities, including police and fire department and asking for emergency service suppliers. So yes, of course, if you're doing it in a new location, we have to make sure, ensure that all the emergency supplier that could be fire engine, could be ambulance and all the, uh, like in case it rains and there is an uh, like a, uh, excavation that is gonna happen, then we have to make sure that the ACVs are already uh, kept in uh, standby and all those things. So again, brainstorming risk for the whole event by the event risk management team. So now the event risk management team, uh, mostly in smaller organizations are the operations team itself. So they are um, indirectly responsible for taking care of the risk management uh, in the uh, venue. But in bigger organizations or organizations that are involved in creating very big events or larger than life could be Olympics, could be Commonwealth, could be IPL or could be, uh, you know, the, uh, the FIFA that happens or the IFA that happens or any kind of that matter. Event which is very, very big, large in scale there will be an uh, there will be dedicated event risk management team then their work and uh, their work or their duty is only to ensure the uh, risk management event risk management process from assessment to evaluation to uh, identifying to creating reports and everything so there is a dedicated risk management team and when we do these events in different countries they uh, the local authorities or the government organizations have identified or they have a person in their department who would uh, assess the risk management the information or data collected from these sources is used to prepare a checklist at the things that we have to follow or the protocols that we have to follow while doing the setup at the venue or while conducting the event or the show. The second thing is when we're doing this uh, mega shows, you know, could be Olympic Games or could be Commonwealth or anything, uh, for this, um, there is like rigorous assessment that is needed. Like Olympic happens across different venues. Like if a country is hosting, uh, like uh, the London or Glasgow Olympics that happen, it did not happen in one stadium. It is happening across four to five different venues. Thousands and thousands of people who are attending, and thousands of people who have traveled from across the world. There are hundreds and thousands of players who are involved, everything. So uh, there is like uh, assessment needed in every step. Uh, from the venue that they're going to play, from the venue the uh, no, launch is going to happen or the, the opening ceremony is going to happen and how they're going to do the movement of logistics, everything. There are like hundreds of things for the um, event risk management team to take care of here. So for this purpose, there are a few tools and techniques. You no, know? uh, So randomly, uh, so um, as I said, initially event management was a much unorganized sector, but as we uh, progressed, uh, we made it more uh, you know, organized and more secured. And that's when a lot of standard operating procedures came into place. And similarly, for risk assessment and management, there are a few tools and techniques which everybody kind of uh, use. Not, it's not compulsory that you use all these tools and techniques, but events of that scale ensure that the event risk management team puts in place all these things. So what are those tools and techniques is what we're going to discuss further. The first is a test events, event modeling, or event incubating. So um, there are two ways of uh, explaining this. So test events are like in a smaller scale, uh, test events, uh, when we talk about it, it is like doing a trial run. So if uh, there is a show that is happening, we're going to do a trial run. Uh, we're going to do uh, the ground check or this, uh, like if uh, before the IPL is uh, played, uh, the ground is checked well, uh, they do uh, some rounds of testing on the ground and everything. That is called test event. So they, you do like you do one stage show, you do one uh, stage performance and see if the, uh, the strength of the stage is good, the backdrop that is used is good, the lights are giving good effects, uh, the smoke machine is giving, is all working fine. So you do testing. The second thing that you uh, do is event modeling. So large scale event, they do a smaller model of it and they, uh, the scaled down model of it. So one is a 16 ratio or one is a 20 ratio. And they see if everything fits in place, if there is good walkability space, if there is an emergency, a movement, is there enough movement for emergency? And everything is accessed in that model. So that is another. So the Olympic Organizing Committee carries out a detailed schedule of smaller events that test aspects of the overall plan. So like if there is uh, an opening ceremony that is going to happen for the Olympic, they're going to do a small scale uh, individual check of each of the elements that is involved in the opening ceremony, just to ensure the final event happens as they expected and not creating any kind of risk to the audience or to the investors. Next is the feasibility test. 
or what I call as the feasibility study. So we have uh, we did uh, touch upon the feasibility assessment uh, during our safety norms uh, that we were discussing under the risk management. So uh, what are the factors that we have to consider under risk assessment for the feasibility study? The sufficiency of lead time or to organize the event. So very very important. Uh, important. So. Um, what happens is that uh, always the event manager or the event company is excited about a new project. But at the same time, we have to be realistic about the time that is required to put these things together. So if a venue, you know that it's a huge venue, if it's a big show that you're going to do, and you know it is going to take 12 to 15 days, plus another one day buffer because of weather condition, etc. You should evaluate the lead time properly. You should always, but at times I'm sure uh, venue might cost you money. So you, you will work against the uh, money, time and everything. But however, if the venue is something, if the money is not a factor that you have to consider, or if uh, it is not a burden considering the risk of the uh, setup, then I would suggest you properly uh, assess the uh, lead time for you to construct the venue, for you to put things together. Or the lead time could also be for the entire project. Like if I'm doing a sponsorship, like if I'm doing a big concert and I have to market, I have to uh, announce the artist, I have to do the marketing, I have to generate sponsorship sales and everything. I should know three months is a good time, four months is a good time, six months is a good time. Is it a good time to do the sales for the exhibition, number of stalls to be sold? Is it a good time? So all these things has to be said. So sufficiency of lead time, that is one. The date of the event and whether it clashes with any other event, may significantly affect the success of the event. This is more like a blockbuster movie releasing, like Salman Khan's movie and Shah Rukh Khan's movie releasing together. I'm sure it's going to be a challenge, both of them. So what happens is that both are like the big Khans and both will be affected very badly. But at the same time, just imagine if there is a Salman Khan movie and there's a small star movie that is releasing, full effect. Of course, it's a small star, right? So I'm not uh, comparing Apple to Apple here. What I'm saying is that um, if I'm doing a concert or I don't know, time and again, I keep giving concert as an example, but uh, that is the easiest way for us to understand. So if I'm doing a concert on a rigid thing on a particular day, and on the same day, if there's already another Shreya Goshal concert, then it would be a problem. The reason being, it might not generate enough ticket sales or sponsorship. The reason being, there will be few, few not there will be a lot of people who like both of them, then they have to make a choice. Whereas if you have it on different dates, there are chances that a person who likes Arijit Singh and Shreya Goshal will attend both. On day one, he'll go there, and day two, he'll go there. So ensure that your dates are not clashing, ensure the dates are not clashing, the reason being um, it could be uh, like uh, the financial year end, the month end, people don't have money and all those things. So there are a lot of elements that you have to consider and think before you finalize on the date. And again, you have to also look into like if there are elections happening during that date or if there is any big uh, government event that is happening or a political event that is happening on that day so that there is a moment of traffic is not affected. All these things has to be considered. It's not on a Monday and all those things. Okay, and uh, the budget and whether the event can be run without incurring a loss, of course, very, very important factor. The degree of support that can be gained from the community, government and parent bodies. Yes, uh, any event that we do, we try to relate it to the uh, department that is associated with that in the government. And um, it makes uh, the event more genuine and it makes uh, more supportive in terms of when we take the government help for it. Excuse me. The sufficiency of resources such as the equipment, man for finance and facilities, yes. So what happens, uh, this would come mostly uh, as a crisis at the time of New Year because everywhere in the world it's New Year. Everywhere in the nation it's a New Year. Everybody is booked. Everybody wants to do a New Year party. So most of the resources are overbooked or people don't commit to it better. So what happens during the time of New Year is that uh, most of the equipments and resources are booked 30, month, uh, 30 days in prior or two months in prior and including artists and all those things are booked two, three months in advance because... Uh, there are very limited people, so availability might becomes a challenge. Prices uh, go like uh, one is to four and uh, things like that. So yes, so sufficiency of resources such as equipment, manpower, finance, and facilities has to be evaluated. The environment impact and whether the event may cause a disturbance to surrounding community and cause traffic congestion, waste, noise, and light. So this was also discussed as a part of uh, the uh, risk uh, that we would face uh, in terms of our evaluation of risk. We did discuss on this, saying that. Um, we have to uh, do a feasibility study on the weather impact. Like if I'm doing it in uh, an outdoor location, I have to see if I'm uh, damaging the eco, uh, the, the eco uh, sensitive area, if anything is happening there, if I'm, I have to cut some trees or if I'm uh, the event that I'm doing, is it damaging the flora and fauna of that area? It has to be checked. Or if it is an area where there are a lot of residents around, we have to check if there is any disturbance that going to happen to them. And if it's a place where there is a, a lot of vehicular movement, we have to check the traffic movement, congestion, noise, etc. 
the legal considerations just permit landholders permission alcohol licensing fundraising regulations etc so uh, the end of the feasibility study the last uh, one is the legal considerations so when we do events we have to take uh, you know uh, the music licenses we have to take uh, the alcohol permission in case if the venue doesn't have a alcohol license or uh, if you have to take the uh, local authority like the uh, mahanagar palika permission the uh, board fire uh, permission etc so ensure that all these things are in place or they have been taken into consideration next what we're going to do um, is under uh, the type of um, assessment that we're going to do is work breakdown structure or we call it as a wbs in this method the event is broken down into separate manageable units each unit has its own resource requirements such as equipment and skills um, wsb chart can be used to identify the risk associated with each unit for example certain unique risks are associated with the promotion of the event the most uh, common risk is misinterpretation or miss representation of the event so what wbs means is that um, on a large scale event when we do uh, one team or one person cannot look into different uh, categories so what we do is we uh, divide it into like we do uh, risk management for the marketing we do risk management for the production we do risk management for the uh, you know event uh, running show so there are different different divided the different teams taking care of it they identify their own list of risk and they take care of it so that is what work breakdown structure so that you have uh, three central units created you just have to ask them and you get to know instead of having one team working on the all the points it might uh, become a little tiresome and not only tiresome it might be a little confusing and uh, overwhelming to execute fall tree another tool uh, to risk assessment is the fall tree which uses the effect to cause method to identify the cause of the unwanted unwanted or bad outcome for example if an event uh, is losing money or running over the budget then the cost can be identified by working through various areas of the event listed in the fault tree thus the tree is so created as to list all possible causes for each fault which may occur for example the fault tree may list that for the fault entrance difficult to find the possible could be lack of signage unreadable signage or it could be these causes can be further branched so what it uh, the fault tree means is that it's a tree system identification of problem so each branch represents one particular department like if there are three i have 12 branches so one particular branch represents one particular department so here uh, they have given an example of signage so one branch i would say signage so if there is a fault in that branch then there will be a lot of uh, miscommunication among uh, the people how they going to be there uh, where they going to communicate or where they going to reach out to places if there are no proper signages they might not be able to reach uh, to the uh, restrooms properly or the backstage area or the ticket counter area or the parking area etc so exactly so immediately we will be able to identify so you create a tree and you draw the branches out of it then you know just looking at the tree you can see and uh, you can like if there is a fault in any of the particular branch you can just highlight it in red then you know where the affected problem uh, area is you don't have to like look into each and every uh, sector you just have to focus on that area and get it sorted that's the assessment part now the other one is risk analysis sheet this is something is like uh, it's a plain vanilla everybody uses it and this is what uh, all small scale companies also use it and so what happens is that during the uh, process of identifying risk which i mentioned in the beginning so what we do is we make a risk analysis sheet and we put different categories into it so it is important to document a risk with the help of risk analysis sheet so we have to maintain there are 30 types of risk that we identify you have to document those 30 types of risk and that can be mapped you know on a graph according to its probability of occurrence we use this method for risk identification as well so when i am identifying 30 different types of risk i just jot down and i put it on a graph and assess and give it a particular importance saying that this uh, like fire is given a lot a lot of prominence uh, crowd movement is probably given a little less so like that it all depends upon the severity of the event or the kind of event so we uh, make a list and then we give the level of importance to it next is the influence diagram or system analysis so the um, uh, you know i think risk analysis sheet that we made we feed into this uh, influence diagram so what happens is the risk may have its effect through the event to assist in identifying this effect the event managers can use an influence diagram which from the science the influence diagram is like a sketch or i would rather say it's like a ripple effect it's like in the water when you know when i just touch the center it creates that ripple you know the circles yes so uh, it's a influence diagram so i can draw a fault tree then i can create an influence so what happens is that for example uh, the part um, is that uh, once i do a signage 
and if it is not done like for example this is the uh, back door entrance for the stage okay I'm, uh, this is the sign that was supposed to be there but it is not there then what will happen it creates a ripple effect so this is another way of having so even in case we don't do this what happens this might not be very very important but again on a bigger scale event this is very important the reason being uh, we will have to see that in case this goes wrong or if this risk uh, erupts then what are the influence areas so you know the next influence is this okay the artist might not come to the right place then what happens the show might get delayed then what happens so you are a kind of uh, informed about the next 10 possible risk uh, issues that can happen within the first ripple itself so that is why influence diagram is also important in bigger scale events theory of constraint this theory says that the first all cons uh, that first all constraint should be identified and then the management process should be concentrated eliminating or at least controlling this constraint these constraints could be stakeholder objectives when you deadline the budget if um, one possible the venue has high risk natural management like demonstration etc etc i have just read through it okay so what is theory of constraint theory of constraint is as it rightly mentioned theory of constraint is for example uh, initially uh, i think under feasibility study we spoke about um, is um, the lead time so now at times the venue you will get it only 3 days prior but you know that you need 4 days so what do you do so this is a constraint second is uh, the budget constraint now uh, you have uh, 1 lakh as a budget but you know it will go little more because you have to put extra wires you have to put extra on a branding and everything is going to happen so budget could be another constraint um, then when you could be a constraint because it is not uh, very much in your favor so there are multiple constraints so theory of constraints so what you have to do is you have to work with the man so when you identify initially you have to work with the management you have to tell them and try and come some way in like a midway and uh, try to achieve this and overcome the risk that is caused by theory of constraints so with this uh, i come to an end of risk assessment okay uh, so how do we assess and everything this is a small table here um so how do you like a classification of identified risk so first one like this is just an example here so um the risk class or type is like class a hazard class b hazard class a hazard this is the different categories so class a is like risk of death or grievous injury this is mostly used in times of production etc um class b is risk of death or grievous injury or not likely but is possible when serious injury illness very likely so this is just a uh this is like a part of the influence diagram where you can saying that this kind of an effect can lead to all those things this is what uh, the outcome of the classification table is this is just an example you don't have to um, you know in point follow this as such second is that risk managers can develop their own criteria and do similar classifications on the probability of financial loss or damage or to reputation success of event or event organizers so another way to classify risk is according to its impact which i am showing in an example table below so have, uh, as per your uh, curriculum itself i have taken a sports event and this is how it is so you can uh, grade the uh, type of uh, event you uh, know the the uh, severity of uh, the risk uh, like extreme major moderate minor and this is severity and what happens under extreme what do we suggest so what happens is that uh, in the event report which is required so we will have to mark it or we have to mention seeing what was the uh, like in case it happens there what are the type of risk that it was and what happened so extreme like death brain spinal in a sport event death spinal injury serious organ damage permanent disability emergency medical this is i'm talking about in a sport event like uh, you might have seen formula 1 or any kind of those kind of events and second they would say it's a major uh, risk is when fracture crash injury serious facial injuries recovery of 6 weeks plus again this also comes on a major moderate is like dislocation of you know certain ribs or bones or anything that happens recovery somewhere between 1 to 6 weeks minor is like your sprain or a first aid that is required participant continuing even less less than a weeks uh, recovery and insignificant is something like you were walking down and just bruised yourself or just a small bite or anything so this and so again um, this classification is done by the risk management team so that at the time of those uh, incident that happens they will be able to evaluate and tabulate it in that category and uh, based on that severity people can communicate also so if there is a, like people when events happening in different venue so the communication can happen based on the category of risk also so we have an extreme risk uh, thing and everything so like that you will have to create code words and accordingly communicate without creating any kind of panic to the people around so this is a part of risk assessment risk evaluation so how do we evaluate this uh, risk 
So the probability and consequence of each risk is listed in the risk checklist. Thus the risk checklist now needs to be converted into risk evaluation. So how do we evaluate it? As I told you, we might need it towards the end. So I'm just showing a sample sheet here. So this would help in allocating the resources and preparing the risk man. So for example, um, in an event, as I told, uh, when I was explaining uh, the tree uh, structure, if I told you that if there are 12 departments, so every department would constitute for the success of the event. But every department might not be equally uh, risky in terms of, for example, here I've given crowd formation, fire in the venue, weather conditions. Now in an event, crowd formation, uh, the probability uh, of risk is very high or the consequences also are high. The reason being, for example, if this event is a large event, if this event is a large event, but if I'm doing an event only for 100 people, the probability and the consequences will be much lesser. It's going to be low. The reason being, it's lesser people that we're going to handle. Fire in the venue, whether it is small or big or any size of the event, it is always going to be high. Probability is very low happening because you would have taken all measures, but the cons consequences are always going to be high. Weather conditions, low. The reason being, it could be an indoor venue. So it doesn't matter whether if it's going to rain. The only problem that's going to happen is that people who are going to come to the venue might take some more time because of rain or anything. But weather conditions play a very less as long as it is an indoor venue. But if it is an outdoor venue and I'm not uh, taking care of structures and everything, I'm just uh, like working on pure luck, then yes, weather condition will become a high probability and a high consequence. So this is how you create your risk evaluation tables. So with this, we come to uh, the end of our uh, session on the risk management process, where we are talking about uh, risk assessment and we also spoke about uh, the risk evaluation. I hope this tables that is used is purely for graphic representation and just for your easy understanding. As to like uh, this, there were only three elements mentioned in this table. In your event, it could be like 20 elements or 30 elements and you could give it equal like probability and consequences equal amount of so the risk management team can assess it accordingly and can take action to that accordingly i know this is a, a completely uh, theory based uh, topic uh, it, it might get boring just listening to me uh, without any pictures or without any uh, video but uh, see these are things like uh, uh, compulsory these are a part of our event management process as i told you uh, with great difficulty our industry has uh, organized itself has put things in place and you being our future event managers, it's very, very important for you to know all these things and implement it in each and every step of the process that you work in any organization in the future. With this, I would say goodbye. Uh, have a great day. Uh, we'll uh, connect with you in our next session where we're going to talk about uh, the different preventive evaluation for risk management. Thank you all. Have a great day.